Hello students, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel after a long time. I hope you enjoyed your holidays and um, classes have started and uh, as a result I have, also, I have also started my classes. Today's topic will be what? Refraction through a lens. Through this, through my channel you can watch the videos uh, even during the, before the exam, during the mock time if you happen to if you want to uh, study a few part or the whole chapter has missed previously so at that point also you can study if you have missed right now so hopefully these videos that I'm uploading will be useful to you at certain point of time okay so let's start refraction through lens now we happen to know the meaning of the word refraction refraction means bending but the new word that we are going to study today is what lens okay so refraction means bending of light when it passes from one medium to another medium we know this part but then the most important question is what is a lens what is a lens in general the glasses the spectacles that you wear that can be considered as a lens the 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 in, in the telescope you can watch uh, through the telescope you can watch the stars and the moon that also has a uh, lens even microscopes have a lens so what is the definition of lens a definition of lens is what lens it is a transparent refracting medium bounded by two spherical surface or a spherical surface and a plane so this is the definition which is given in your book now this definition is given let's try to break the definition and understand each and every term which is there in this definition firstly a lens is a transparent now what is the meaning of the word transparent where in a medium where you through which you can see and you have a hundred percent visibility you have a hundred percent visibility okay means what uh, the spectacles that you are wearing right now in your eyes that is a transparent of uh, that is a transparent medium because through the spectacles you see uh, everything very clearly so that is a transparent that's a transparent object even the uh, if you go to a showroom uh, suppose you are passing in a showroom if you see the cars or the some dresses have been kept behind the glass so through the glass through the glass you can see those cars expensive say good cars or some dresses very clearly so those glasses can be also considered as a transparent medium or you can see the fishes in your aquarium very clearly so the glass of the aquarium is a transparent object so i think the what the meaning of the word transparent is very much clear to you now already i stated what is the meaning of the word refracting refracting means what bending bending so we know when light passes from one medium to another medium it will bend obviously when it passes from say this is air and this is glass the light will bend okay the light is going to bend towards normal air for normal anyways so the light will bend when if the when the light enters the lens when the light is going to enter the lens it is going to bend so refracting means meaning is clear <coughs> now it is bounded so and refract so transparent refracting medium so if i consider this as my lens like your glasses okay this glasses so this so this glass acts as a medium or not over there this is air that is also a medium this is also air that's a medium 
So A is a medium, A is a medium in between the glass that we have, that is also a medium. So I can say lens is also a medium through which the light passes. So lens is a medium through which the light happens to pass. And the lens is bounded by two spherical sub, uh, surfaces. It is bounded by sp sp spherical surfaces. Spherical means what? It, this is a spherical surface. So this is one spherical surface and this is another spherical surface or this is also a spherical surface and this is also a spherical surface. So you can see that this is a lens which is bounded by two spherical surfaces. It is also a lens. It is bounded by two spherical surfaces or they are saying it is bounded by a spherical surface and a plane. So this is a spherical surface and a plane so a spherical surface and a plane or you can say a spherical surface this is a spherical surface and a plane so this is a spherical this is a spherical this is a spherical this is a spherical or you can say this is a spherical this is a plane and this is a spherical this is a plane so you can see as per the definition it is bounded so the lens which is a medium which is bounded by two spherical surfaces over there the two spherical surfaces or they are saying a spherical surface and a plane or a spherical surface and a plane. So I hope this definition of lens is very much clear to you. So lens is a transparent refracting medium bounded by two spherical surfaces or a spherical surface and a plane. So <coughs> as we have considered the as we have completed the definition part of the lens. Now we see next. <clears throat> so basically there are two kinds of lens that we have in our chapter. There are two kinds of lens. The two types of lens. The two types of lens that we have is what? Number A. Convex lens. And number B, concave lens. Now here is a little bit of confusion. Concave, convex lens. <coughs> you have to understand it by a logic. Okay, the logic is convex. Convex means bulging. So a convex means bulging. So a convex lens will have bulging on either sides. So if I say this is a bulging, see it is coming out and this is also a bulging. So you can see a bulging on both the side, it makes a convex lens. And a concave, concave means what? Depression, okay, depression means what? Uh, it is not bulging, it is going inside. So this surface, suppose this is surface 1 and this is surface 2. So surface 1 will be going inside and also surface 2 is also going inside. So this is a concave lens. So this is a concave lens and this is a convex lens. I hope you can un you can like you now get the logic behind it. Uh, if you want to uh, see that in a, in a more um, logical way that what is a concave and convex, I can give you a small way. Do you remember what is a concave mirror? Do you happen to remember? If I talk about concave mirror, it, uh, what is a concave mirror? This is a concave mirror. The silvering part is inside. Okay, this is a concave mirror. <coughs> this is a mirror which is a concave. Now you take another concave mirror on that side. Okay, in, a, in this way. So, concave mirror. So you can see the two concave mirrors placed on either side like this way forms a concave lens, forms a concave lens and talking about convex, talking about convex, do you remember the convex mirror, do you remember convex mirror, <coughs> how was the convex mirror was looking like? A convex mirror was something like this. 
okay the outer side is reflecting and the inner side is uh, you can say it is silvered and you take one more con vex mirror where the outer surface is reflecting and the inner surface is mirrored and you join both of them as you have joined you join both of them so this first concave mirror and the second concave mirror so, sorry convex mirror this is a convex mirror this is a convex mirror together you can say makes a convex lens this way also you can remember so whichever way you can remember it by convex which is bulging or concave which is depression or you can say convex lens is formed by two convex mirror placed in this way okay one after the other but in opposite direction or you can say a concave lens has means depression so depression on both the sides sides or a concave lens is formed by two concave mirrors placed one after the other on but in the opposite way so this is a concave mirror you can see inner side is reflecting uh, sorry outer side is reflecting inner surface is uh, silver so like that way also this is a concave mirror and both the concave mirror makes a concave lens <clears throat> so i hope the concave lens which is a concave lens and which is a convex lens this confusion should be clear if it is not clear i will suggest you to practice this diagram at least 5 times yeah practice it 5 times two times you see and practice and three times you don't see cover the book and don't see and practice after 5 times if you practice in this way your brain will automatically detect which is a concave and which is a convex you don't have to think about it it's just a matter of practice how much you practice your brain happens to understand that part more easily so we have the two concave and we have the concave and the convex lens now but the thing is that a concave and a convex lens is further divided into three three parts means what this convex lens is divided into three part this concave lens is also divided into three part and how what are these three parts and how they are named that is very important so let's talk about the convex lens the first convex lens that we have is something like this okay let's uh, the, let's talk about the name so okay, huh? the first convex lens that we have is bi convex lens the second one that we have is what plano convex lens and third third thing what you, what we have is what concave concave con vex lens okay so these are the three lenses that we have for the convex now over there you have to remember certain rules okay remember certain rules for the first one it is very easy bi convex means what both the side we have convex and convex means what i think i already told you both the side is bulging so convex means bulging so this side is bulging and even this side is bulging so you have a bi convex lens but over there these two you follow a certain rules see the thing is that no ha huh? certain things in our life or in studies seems very difficult seems it is impossible you we cannot achieve it ha huh? but you know how to achieve it where is the trick the trick is follow small small steps okay follow small small steps and ultimately you will reach your goal which is which was impossible which was initially seeming impossible to achieve you can achieve that by by make sure that you follow certain small small steps or for, follow certain small small rules these things might be difficult according to the book the diagram but if you follow certain rules na ha it becomes quite easy actually it is not actually hard first thing that you have to remember is what 
plano convex when I say <coughs> this side is a right side the first word represents the right side and the second word represents the left side even for concave or convex the first word represents the right side and the second word represents the left side okay if you remember the first word is right first word is right and the second one is left okay now how to how to draw it see first you start with the say right side right uh, first start with the left side left side is what convex so I, I i think you know this side is left and this side is right like obviously okay like this side is the left side and this side is the right side so <coughs> this convex is on the left hand side okay no problem convex is on the left hand side so on the left hand side you draw a bulging and a plano means what a plane surface is on the right hand side okay a plane surface on the right hand side so i draw a plane surface now see plano convex is this diagram so this is my left hand side and this one is right hand side which is very easy follow the same concept over here also concave or convex so convex a convex means what a bulging convex means bulging which side i told you the second word always represents the left side so left side is a bulging and concave concave is the right hand side right and concave means what depression okay going inside so this surface is like going inside so this is the left this is the right so you can see this is a plano convex and this is a concave convex clear i hope this part is clear to you now let's see what are the three types of convex lens that we have three types of concave lens right the three types of concave lens that we have right now is the first one over here i'm writing a is bi concave c sorry b plano concave and part c con vexo concave okay so these are the three types of concave lens that we have now first one is very easy first one is very easy that it they are saying bi concave so concave means what depression i told you concave means depression means what it is like the surface is going inside so going inside so this is going inside and even this is also going inside so bi means what both the sides are going inside and that's how you have the concave or say bi concave lens second one plano concave remember the rule same follow the rule the first word represents the right hand side and the second word represents the left hand side even over here the first one represents the right hand side and the second word represents the left hand side now you see how it, uh, how we manage to do it concave is on the left hand side so concave means what depression so we draw a depression on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have a plano we have a plano and we join so we have plano concave and the last word convex or concave same rule first draw the left hand side which says what concave and i told you concave means what concave means depression so there is a depression and convex so convex means right hand side convex means what bulging so you have a you have a kind of a bulging okay so this side is bulging and this side is depression and we have a convex or concave okay so i hope this part is clear so this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side this is the left hand side this is the right hand side so it is very easy if you follow a certain logic a certain uh, steps then even difficult difficult numericals or problems or concepts or theory or logics becomes easy so this is the six kind of lens we have and out of this six i'm telling you this one and this one is very important 
it comes every time in the exam draw a convex or concave lens or a concave or convex lens or they ask both draw a convex or concave and a concave okay, concave or convex for two marks it comes one marks and one marks so make sure you happen to practice these two part and follow the logic the logic that i told you left and right okay the first one is always the right and the second word is always the left i hope this concept is clear to clear to all of you now next word now if you have certain things in our life it is our it is for a particular purpose uh, like like what i will say the mobile phone that you have with you what is the purpose of the mobile phone the purpose of the mobile phone is to call someone or to watch this youtube videos or whatever things that you do play games or you know social media whatever but it is of a particular use mobile phones if i talk about this markers that i have in my hand what is the use to write huh if i have this white board right now with me what is the use of the white board ha huh? so with that we can write it on write it uh, write on it so everything has a use so we have lens so what is the use of lens or i can say what is the function of lens so my question is what is the function of lens there are two functions of lens there are two function the first function and the second function the first one function is to converge and the second function is to diverge converge means at a point all rays are coming and diverge means what from the point the rays are going out okay these rays are going out so this is converge and this is diverge so the function of the lens is to converge or diverge so we have two lenses concave and convex which one will converge and which one will diverge a big question comes which one will converge is the concave lens is going to converge or is going to diverge convex lens is it going to converge or diverge we have to know it and why it converges and why it diverges that is more important okay so we have to know it but before we start with that topic we have to go back to the previous chapter i think that chapter is called uh, that chapter in that chapter we have a small part that is called prism and we have to just uh, go back to the prism part to understand what does a prism does <sighs> suppose this is a prism okay this is a prism a prism can do what a prism always bends the light so to suppose this is the light coming this is the light which is entering the prism so a prism can do what a prism always bends the light the prism always bends the light but uh, let me tell you uh, as i say in english there is a saying the saying is half knowledge is very dangerous if you have half knowledge about a certain particular uh, matter it is very dangerous either you have full knowledge either you have no knowledge okay that if you have no knowledge that's good if you have full knowledge that is best but if you have half knowledge that is very dangerous so this prism always bends the light that is actually half knowledge this is half knowledge then what is the full knowledge a prism always bends the light but the actual thing that you have to know is what it bends the light towards the base so it bends the light towards the base so if i consider this as the prism what which one is the base this side this surface is my base so prism does what it will bend the light towards the base dekho 
this light which is emerging out is towards the base. This is the base, it is going towards the base. Even if I have a inverted prism, if I have a inverted prism, something of this way, then what can happen? Then also the same logic. If a light is coming, if the light is coming over here like this way, and this light is coming, this light will be bended towards its base. So which is the base for this prism? This is the base. So it will be bending towards the base. So it is very important that you know these two logic. A prism always bends the light towards its base. Now the next thing that you have to know, if you have a square or a rectangular glass slab, this is a glass slab and a ray is coming incident on it at an angle of 90 degree. You can say there is an angle of 90 degree over here. So if the ray is coming at an angle of 90 degree, how it will emerge out, how it will pass? It will pass undeviated, the ray will pass undeviated for a glass slab if, if it is at an angle of 90 degree. So you need to know these three concepts as of now. I hope these three concepts which I told you is very much clear. Now let's talk about the function of lens that was our actual, actual topic. I hope these three uh, concepts or these three diagrams you happen to remember because it will be utilized. Now, <clears throat> if I consider this as a convex lens, this as a convex lens. Now, this convex lens, can I draw it like this way, in an equivalent way, not exactly same, but in an equivalent way. I take a glass slab in the between and you put a erect prism on the top and an inverted prism at the bottom. Now this convex lens is somewhat looking like this uh, diagram or not. You have a glass slab and two prisms, one inverted and one uh, erect. Now what you do is that you take three rays you take three rays, this is the first ray, this is the second ray and this is the third ray. First ray, second ray, third ray. Now what will happen? <coughs> you know, talking about the second ray, the second ray will pass undeviated as I told previously. Once it hits the glass slab, it will pass undeviated. What will happen to the first ray? This ray, this ray, I told you, it will be bending towards the base. So base, to, base is this side. So it will be bending towards the base. Even over here, this is the base. So it will be bending towards the base. So you can say a convex lens this is my convex lens and a convex lens acts as what? Acts as a converging lens. You can see the rays are getting converged or directed at a particular point. So this convex lens acts as a converging lens. I hope you understood this part. Now coming to the second part. If we talk about the concave lens, if you talk about the concave lens, now how is a concave lens looks like? A concave lens looks similar like this. 
Now, this is a concave lens. We will draw a certain kind of a convex lens but with using uh, the prisms and the glass slab. So I'll use the glass slab in the middle and on the top I'll have a prism in this way and at the bottom I'll have one more prism in this way, right? So this concave lens looks somewhat like this. Now what happens? I will draw the <coughs> rays which are coming, the three rays, first ray which comes over here, the second ray which comes over here and the third ray comes over here. Now as I told you what will happen to the middle one, the middle one ray will always pass undeviated. But what about the first ray, see follow the concept, the first ray will bend towards its base, so this is my base. If you consider this as a prism as a whole, this is a base, so it will bend towards the base. So it will bend, see the ray is bending, this is my base, it is going towards the base. Even same over here, this is my base and the ray is bending, uh, I cannot just okay, a little bit, I just, just change a little bit. The ray will be bending towards the base. See, you can say towards the base. Now you can say a concave lens acts as what kind of a lens? Acts as a diverging lens. It acts as a diverging lens. I hope this part is understood to you. So a concave lens acts as a diverging lens and a, the previous one. A convex, the convex was acting as a convex, in the previous one, convex lens was acting as a converging lens. So I hope till here you understood everything. So today's lecture I will keep it short and I will keep it till here. I hope you understood whatever I taught you over, uh, till now. If you haven't understood, what I can say is that please repeat the video or watch it once more and you will understand the in a better way. So, so this was all about today and I hope you <coughs> do your work, uh, the, all the homeworks that are given to you and um, yeah, that's all. Take care, bye and if you like the video, always give a thumbs up or a like. Okay, bye, take care, good night.